I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. Today we have uh, some clouds and um, I'm trying to maintain my instrument currency. And uh, this may be the last opportunity to get in the clouds, judging by the weather. Um, before the end of April, I think I have a couple approaches I need to do uh, before that time to stay instrument current. I try to get into the clouds any chance I get since we have clear skies so many days of the year here in SoCal. On this flight, I was halfway between really fresh and a little rusty in terms of actual IMC flying. And going into it, I felt pretty good. I've been hesitant to publish this video because my instrument flying was surprisingly sloppy in a couple places. Looking back, I've learned a lot from this flight and ultimately decided sharing it would make me own my mistakes and possibly help others. I don't know if I'm going to get into clouds um, after the final approach fix for it to technically count as a logged instrument approach for currency, but in any case, it's good to file a flight plan and get in the system and uh, you know practice uh, flying IFR in the system for sure. Sergio on Bravo Whiskey, I have your clearance device ready to copy. Okay, Roger Wilco, thanks for Bravo Whiskey. That's to the chopper. Wyoming Ground Cherokee, 631 Bravo Whiskey's in the run up here for Tree Zero, ready to copy my clearance to Oxnard. I'm number 631 Bravo Whiskey, you're clear to the Oxnard Airport via the Whiteman 1 departure procedure, Fillmore direct. Climb maintain 4000, expect 6000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 128.75, squawk 4664. Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey is clear to the Oxnard Airport via the Whiteman 1 IFR departure procedure. Fillmore, direct. Climb maintain 4,000, expect 6,000, one zero minutes. 128.75 and 4664 on the transponder. One Bravo Whiskey, ready back, correct if I ready. All right, we'll do thanks, one Bravo Whiskey. Departing IFR from Whiteman requires flying the Whiteman 1 obstacle departure procedure, which now has a graphical depiction. Due to the proximity of Burbank and Van Nuys airports, in order to depart IFR without a very long delay, the clearance is given departing runway 30. Sometimes this means departing with a tailwind, and I always think about performance calculations taking into account the tailwind. The departure procedure also calls for a minimum climb rate of 366 feet per nautical mile, up to 3,400 feet, which is no problem for the six. The procedure goes as follows. Depart runway 30, climb to 400 feet AGL, and then left turn heading 260. Intercept the Van Nuys 325 radial and fly it outbound, continuing to climb. Once passing through 4,600 feet, continue climbing in a left turn direct Van Nuys VOR and depart Van Nuys VOR at or above the MEA for your route of flight, in our case toward Fillmore VOR. I almost never fly the full departure procedure as the departure controller will give me a new vector or direct waypoint, usually right around when it's time to make the left turn to head back to Van Nuys VOR. And this spot typically provides a challenge for me. I'm often in the thick of IMC, climbing, turning, and reprogramming the avionics. This flight was no exception. Wind 180 at four, runway 30, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff on tree zero, uh, what brought whiskey? Power is good. Ages are green, airspeed's alive. to go until my left turn. I'm heading 300. Over to departure, thanks, one Bravo Whiskey. And we can make that left turn over to 260. So call departure Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey is uh, 2000 climbing, 4000 heading 260. Number 631 Bravo Whiskey, so can I approach INET, Burbank, SMS 308. INET, 1 Bravo Whiskey. 1 Bravo Whiskey, radar contact 1 mile northwest of Whiteman, maintain 5000. Okay, up to 5000, 1 Bravo Whiskey. Alright, something different, putting it in GPSS mode here for um, autopilot on the departure procedure, which I haven't done before, to see how it flies this, uh, this turn. If it's going to take me outbound. It's going to be a far here. Actually, I'm going to be entering the clouds in a minute, but 3,800 going up to 5,000. It's 
making the right turn. 800 feet to go. So we're turning around now. Approaching altitude. Approaching 5,000. I don't know if it was the turn combined with the power change to level off at 5,000 feet, adjusting the mixture, maybe made worse by the changing light conditions and the bumpy ride, or occasionally catching glimpses outside of the cloud shapes forming a false horizon. But these things all added up to a confusing feeling of spatial disorientation. The final straw was a course change from the controller and looking away to reprogram the GPS. Number one, Bravo Whiskey, proceed right to Kudak, intercept the final approach course. Direct Kudak and intercept the final approach course with Bravo Whiskey. I've had the Dyna and HDX EFIS system for several months and only flown actual IMC with it now for a few times, so it's definitely not second nature for me, as the analog gauges had become. Direct Kudak, here we go. When I looked back at the HDX, for just a split second I was confused by the attitude indicator depiction and representation. It felt like I was in a left turn when in fact I was turning right. The small bit of unfamiliarity with the digital attitude indicator was enough to momentarily confuse me. Spatial disorientation is really hard to describe. Your body and mind are at total odds, and for me, in that moment, nothing really makes sense. It's like my brain is just frozen on pause, and I need to consciously reset it. I always say to just trust your instruments, and on the ground, this seems like it should be easy. But in the reality of the moment, it's easier said than done. First, you have to actually make sense of your instruments in order to trust them. Those few moments can be difficult. On this flight, it threw me off my game, and pretty soon I was way off my altitude. Number one, Bravo Whiskey, maintain 5,000 and proceed right to Kudak. Okay, I can do uh, 5,000, go to Kudak, one Bravo Whiskey. After ATC's gentle reminder, I managed to get my head back around the situation, slowly get back down to my assigned altitude, and stay on course. But I was off my game for the rest of the flight. Number one, Bravo Whiskey, descend and maintain 4,000. Okay, down to 4,000, one Bravo Whiskey. Alright, we're going down to 4,000 and direct Kudak to intercept the localizer. After Kudak, we can uh, send down a 3,700 once we're cleared for the approach. Well, two minutes, three, zero. Okay, so got six, three, one, Bravo, Whiskey, contact, plumbing approach, one, two, eight, point, six, five. Uh, one, two, eight, point, six, five, thanks, over Bravo, Whiskey. Point of approach, Cherokee, six, three, one, Bravo, Whiskey, uh, 4,000, direct Kudak. Call number 631 Bravo Whiskey, Magoo Approach, clarify links to the ILS. Yeah, I want the uh, ILS runway 25 to uh, Oxnard and I've got Kilo. Number 1 Bravo Whiskey, cross through deck 4000, clear ILS, 25 approach. Alright, uh, clear, Kudak at uh, 4000 and clear for the ILS runway 25, Oxnard, 1 Bravo Whiskey. Okay, making the right turn to 256. And down to 3700. And we'll slow it down quite a bit here. Got two miles to Hoopla. Leaving altitude. After Hoopla, we'll go down to 3200. And one mile to Hoopla. Number seven whiskey, Fox Drive traffic, one o'clock, two miles maneuvering down north. Number 3200. See that glide slope there. As I was descending to the final approach fix for glide slope intercept, I was in and out of the cloud bases. I should have leveled off at 3,200 feet and waited for the glide slope to center up. But for some reason, I kept descending below the glide slope intercept. I've reviewed this footage so many times and just can't figure out what I was thinking. Maybe I was distracted from the previous portion of the flight, or maybe it was because I was complacent with pretty good ground contact. But either way, I'm pretty mad at myself for this one. I was easily two to 300 feet below where I should have been, and the glide slope was about three quarter scale deviation. I eventually got it back on track, but I should have taken corrective action much sooner. November 1, Bravo, Whiskey, contact Oxnard Tower, 134.9 or 5. Yeah, 134.9 or 5, 1 Bravo, Whiskey. Oxnard Tower, Turkey 631, Bravo, Whiskey is on the ILS runway 25, about uh, 8 miles from the runway. 631, Bravo, Whiskey, stainless, or Oxnard Tower, report the outer marker. Okay, I'll report the outer marker, 1 Bravo, Whiskey. To top it off, I was supposed to report crossing the outer marker to tower, and I didn't even do that, despite the audio panel sounding the marker beacon. Technically, I passed through a cloud just as I was passing the final approach fix, so I could log this approach for currency. 
but I know I have more work to do to actually be proficient. I know I need to work on altitude discipline in particular. Type 1, Bravo Whiskey, number 2, follow fast to short final, runway 25, quick land. In the end, putting this video out there means I have to own my mistakes, and owning them means a better chance to learn from them. I love it when aviation teaches me something about life. Minimums. Here's minimums. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters for believing in this channel. It's been great to connect with you over there. I can't wait to share some fun new ideas with you all soon. Until then, thanks for coming along on the journey with me. All right, that was fun. Pretty, pretty stressful. That's what we like. We like the stress. The stress is what we thrive on. <laughs>